I'm Tony. Welcome to Block Blaze and my Lego. Uh, I'm 37 years old. Uh, I got into Lego when I was a young tyke. Um, I jokingly say that my parents were incredibly abusive because they never bought as much Lego for me as I wanted. Um, so as uh, many affolds, uh, I went through my dark ages. Uh, I lost interest in Lego around about the same time I found an interest in girls. Um, and eventually my Lego got packed away and put into a cupboard. My aunt went off with my Lego for her, uh, for her young daughter. And uh, many years later, her daughter had grown up um, and also lost interest in Lego. Uh, I'd started my uh, dating my now wife and thought, you know, maybe I should uh, get my Lego again. Um, just in case we have kids and I've got Lego on hand and that'll be great. Um, subsequently, we decided not to have children, um, but that's mainly because I want to keep all the Lego to myself. Got my Lego back from my aunt um, and sort of hadn't looked at Lego in years, hadn't wandered into a toy store, hadn't looked online to see what Lego was doing and sat down in front of my computer, um, went online uh, to see what was going on in the Lego community. And one of the first things I stumbled across was a website called Brothers Brick. Um, and for those of you who don't know, Brothers Brick is one of the leading um, Lego, AFOL Lego uh, blogs. Um, and what it does is it has a whole lot of people who build mocks, uh, my own creation. It's people who sit down with all their Lego and just build awesome things. Um, and I still remember to this day what that first um, build was. Um, and I fell in love and I thought this is going to be my hobby from now on. The build you see behind me uh, is a design by Mark Larson. Uh, he's a great Lego designer um, and again discovered his builds on uh, Brothers Brick. Um, he built this amongst uh, a whole lot of other snails uh, for Brickwall Chicago a couple of years ago. Um, his initial idea was to have giant snails doing a, a race with buildings on top of them and I just fell in love with the, the, the design of the snail. One of the fantastic things and uh, one of the reasons why I reached out to Mark Larson about his snail was the uh, actual shell of the snail. Um, in LEGO, it's always very difficult to build round things. Um, there's a couple of programs uh, that you can find online that'll uh, give you uh, um, a, a plan uh, that'll allow you to build um, a circular sort of object. But invariably, what you're building is, is a square box and uh, you happen to build a round sort of belt shell uh, using a lot of uh, plates. The beautiful thing about uh, Mark Snail is that the shell actually has a spiral. Um, and as you can imagine, that's an incredibly difficult thing to design. Um, and there's no way in, 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 in how I could do it. Um, I'm unfortunately, as much as I'd like to think I'm a good builder, I'm not that skilled. Um, but as I said, Mark was really uh, nice enough to send his LDD file. Um, and I'll be honest, looking at it in LDD, it, it looked complicated. Building that thing was, was another thing entirely. It's, uh, it's, it's a work of art. Um, I've changed the colors slightly um, and then uh, built stuff on top of the snail. In the original uh, design, um, they built castles on top of their snails. Um, you can see that the current design has a, a guy uh, using it as a uh, tank. Um, I've also had an abandoned building on top and there's a couple of other ideas I've got um, that'll uh, probably come in in the next year or so. But the uh, main idea of what I want to do with the snail is to build uh, essentially a, a pub on top. Um, or in this case, it'll probably be a tavern because it's fantasy based. Um, and uh, the tavern will be on top of the snail because it'll be a pub crawl. Uh, one of the other ideas that I have that I'm probably going to work on sooner rather than later is to open up the side of the snail. Uh, currently it's uh, just a framework inside, but the idea is to actually fill the inside of the snail with a minifig's house. So this, the minifig will actually be living and uh, working inside the snail. Uh, and the, uh, the, the snail shell will be on a, a bit of a hinge there so you can look inside. If you're a new AFOL or you're just getting into LEGO as an adult, uh, I need to give you a piece of information that's probably going to be the most important piece of information you'll ever get. And that's start sorting right from the beginning. You don't want to get to the point where you've got 20 different containers filled with LEGO uh, and it's all mixed together and you're trying to find that one specific part. The second piece of advice that I can give you is do not sort by color. If you're trying to find a specific part and it's black and it's in the container with all the black parts, you're never going to find it. Start sorting per part. You might think that your collection is too small to really start doing that, but quite honestly, this hobby grabs hold of you and uh, sooner rather than later, you're going to have an entire room to yourself like I do, uh, filled with Lego, and you're going to be spending more of your time sorting than actually building Lego. One of the things we say in the Lego community, at least down here in South Africa, is that uh, you think this is a Lego hobby, but invariably what it becomes is a storage and sorting hobby. Um, you land up spending a ton of money on different storage solutions, and invariably you go through three or four different storage solutions before you finally figure out what actually works for you. Um, you'll see, I'm sure, throughout this series that every single person's got a completely different storage solution to the others. Uh, me, in this room, I've probably got at least five or six different storage solutions, and to be honest, none of them work for me, uh, but we make do as well as we can. If you're trying to figure out how to sort your Lego, 
Bricklink offers an incredibly uh, detailed way on how to sort your Lego. They've got separate categories because a lot of the time you'll have two separate things that you think are slopes, but if you actually go and look at Bricklink, you'll see that one is a slope and the other one is a minifigure accessory. It's always a good idea to sort of see how either Bricklink, um, and there's another website called Brickset, categorizes their Lego. Uh, that'll definitely help you sort your Lego. Whether or not it'll help you find your Lego once you've sorted it, that's a different story uh, entirely. But I have to imagine that if you're an Apple, you've got a pretty good idea on uh, where parts go. If you're thinking of joining a lug uh, as, an, uh, as an adult, I can only encourage you to do so. Uh, lugs are great ways of meeting up with like-minded uh, Apples uh, who share your hobby. Um, you know, it's a fairly insular community. A lot of the time in this hobby, you're spending it sitting in a room at a desk building Lego. You don't really get a chance to get out there uh, and meet people who enjoy your hobby as well. So lugs are an incredibly uh, good way to meet people in your hobby. Um, on top of that, lugs offer a lot of uh, advantages. Um, a lot of lugs have got uh, connections with LEGO International, which allows them to uh, do certain things that you wouldn't normally be able to do in this hobby. If you'd like to join a lug and you're in South Africa, um, you can go check in the notes below, um, and they'll give you more information on a lug that is close to you. Thanks for joining me here in my LEGO room and listening to my story. Um, don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, um, and don't forget to check out the previous episodes as well. Uh, I know all of those people. Uh, they're absolutely fantastic and I know exactly what they're talking about. Um, there'll be more episodes coming up soon as well. Uh, so uh, yeah, hit that notification bell and they'll let you know exactly when it pops out.